Oh, she's awake. April! Good morning, Ben Bondu. Greetings of the new day to you, April. Did you sleep well in the spirit, Dig? Did I sleep well? Aside from the voices, the apparitions, the sharp rocks poking me in the back, and the moist moss mattress? No, not really. So you were visited by the spirits? I guess. When you told me last night that I would be, I didn't believe you. I thought it was just a manner of speaking, like saying, don't let the bed bugs bite. Our ancestors are close to us at all times. Once in a while, they speak to those who have been chosen to spend a night in the spirit dig. That they spoke to you is a great honor. April, a great honor. Right now, I'd be happy to exchange all the honor in the world for one decent night's sleep. <laughs> oh dear me, you are very funny, April. If all humans are as funny as you, your cities must be filled with laughter. The Elder wishes to speak with you again. And I must sing now, down in the tunnels. It was decided this morning that I was finally ready to join the diggers. I'm happy for you, Ben Bondu. Thank you. May the balance provide you on your journey, April. You will be in my heart always. And you will be in mine, Ben Bondu. Always. You will come back when your journey is over. I'll try. Goodbye. Oh my. I cannot stand farewells. But... Farewell. So, you are awake? Did you sleep well? As well as can be expected, I guess. Does the word Buckbar mean anything to you? Buckbar? Where did you hear this word? The spirits told me that I'd had a Buckbar. So, the spirits spoke to you openly? You are lucky, human. Some who enter the spirit dig never come out again. And some spend the night but hear nothing. But to you, the spirits spoke. A Bakbar is a vision of yourself that speaks the truth in two ways. One is the dark truth. This is how you see yourself when you are not sure of yourself or angry with yourself. The other truth is the very opposite of the first. This is how you must see yourself to be happy. But the spirits remind us that both are important. That you cannot love yourself without first seeing your flaws. The people I saw, were they really there? The spirits use masks to convey their messages. And they speak in voices from the past or the present that carry great weight with you. The messengers are never the same, nor the message. But you must take care to hear and heed their words. I was told that my name among the Banda would be April Bandu Mbata. She among the little ones who seeks and finds. So, you are the one we sing of. The human who would come to aid us and to save our world, and who will then tear it apart. You bring tidings both happy and sad to the Banda, April Bandu and Bata, both hope and despair. This world will never be the same again once you have passed through it. But we are grateful, and I'm proud to have met you and to give you what you came for. It was just luck that brought me here. I didn't come for anything in specific. Yes, you did. This is what you came for. What is it? This is the stone given to us by the fathers to keep safe until this day. It has been with us for so long. 
Oh, it's a piece of the disc. Then you know it. You came for the stone, even though you didn't know it until now? I guess I did. Thanks. Now, you must continue your journey, April Bundu and Bata. Remember that this is your tribe now. And so you are welcome at our fires and in our digs whenever you come this way again. I'm honored. Thank you. May there always be soil between your toes, April Bandu and Bata. And between yours, Elder. Goodbye. He's sleeping. Wake up! Huh? Turn off the big light, Mommy. It's called the sun, Crow. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. <sighs> I was having this weird dream about a big-ass turkey wearing a pair of red shoes. And you were there. And, and he was there. And, and, and maybe it wasn't a dream after all. I think it's safe to say that you need therapy. And we need to leave right now. We do? We do! Let's go get him! <clears throat> uh, who are we getting again? Some evil alchemist out to rule the world with his powerful and destructive magic. Yes! Exactly! Uh, I'll keep an eye out for other potential threats then, shall I? Like, uh, marauding mice? You do that, Crow. Thank you. Swamp water. There are things moving down there. Big things. Mosquitoes everywhere. I hope one of those clouds doesn't get a whiff of me in charge. The last thing I need now is malaria. There's an ordeal I prefer not to go through again. Did I drop something? It feels like I dropped something. Whatever it was, one of those... things probably ate it. They look like dark purple tulips with a satin texture. Pretty, but a little too gothic for my taste. It's like, where's the funeral? They feel very soft to the touch and soothing like skin moisturizer. I'll bring a few in case my hands get dry. Never hurts to be prepared for a dry skin emergency. That must be Roper Clax's castle. The whole gravity-defying bit kind of gives it away. Nice stonework, but not particularly realistic. Those berries look ripe and juicy, but my mom taught me never to judge a book by its cover. They're probably poisonous and almost certainly fattening. Strange texture. My fingers feel tingly. Oh my god! What are you? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you try to open your mouth a bit? <laughs> Impossible? Okay. Okay, there's gotta be some way to help you talk. By the way, can you help me get up there? Into the castle? Yes. 
I don't know any magic, sorry, but I'll try to find a way to soften you up. Thank you. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. Uh-oh, I'm sinking! Now that was a bit scary. I could have lost my shoes! And I guess my life. I guess he's not around. I should try again later. That marshy ground between me and the berries looks treacherous. I'll probably get stuck and drown. <laughs> it's chilly out here. You should really be wearing a sweater, doll. You don't want to catch a cold, not with the fate of the known cosmos on your shoulders. I'm fine, thanks, Crow. What's going on with you? Keeping my eyes open, you know? Floating on the warm winds, doing that whole Hawkeye shtick. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. I spotted you from at least 100 yards away. Impressive. Yep. They don't call me... <laughs> the Lord of the Winds for nothing. Do they really call you that? No, but soon, by the balance, they will! Now, what can I do for you, sweetheart? Crow, I need you to fly over there and get some of those berries for me. And Crow? Yes, ma'am. Don't eat the berries. No, ma'am. Thanks, Crow. You got it. I'm gonna go back up there and work on my eyesight. I ain't stopping until I can spot those cute chicks from miles and miles away. I got a few of these ripe and sticky berries, but I don't want to carry them with me for much longer. The juice is coloring my pants. A soft, purple moisturizing flower. It's some sticky, mushy moisturizing cream I made from the berries in the flower. Unfortunately, I don't think the salve will be effective for very long. I'm April, by the way. Lorhan, I'm a sailor, and you've got to help me get out of here. I don't think I can stand it much longer. What happened to you? <sighs> that blasted, blasted alchemist cast a spell on me, turned me to solid rock. Then he put me here to be gatekeeper and anchor for his blasted castle. That was near six full moons past now. You've been here for half a year? Curse the balance. When you say it like that, it is an age. My wife is sure to have taken someone else's bed by now. Blasted magic. The Vanguard were right. What do you mean the Vanguard were right? 
that we've been at the mercy of the balance for too long. It's time to make some changes, put the control back into the hands of the people. How would that have helped you? Well, for one, there wouldn't be any rogue magicians like this Roper Clax running about causing trouble. Do you not agree? I'm not about to argue politics with you right now, Lorhan. I'm in a hurry. Who's arguing? And blasted be my rocky hide. Get me out of here. How can I help you? It ain't just me, April. There are dozens of men up there. Servants and sailors and merchants and soldiers. All sent here by their masters to deal with Roper Clax. Ha! <laughs> Cursed be the balance. We've all been turned to stone. And our souls trapped in a crystal that the madman keeps in his tower. He draws power from that. Power that shouldn't be his by right. But this blasted problem of the balance has upset the natural order of things. If the Vanguard were in control, this would never have happened. Things would be like they used to be a long time ago. Everything was good then? Oh sure, there were problems, but this rift? It ain't natural. Science and magic belong together, in the hands of the people. Not to some naked guardian fellow on a tower somewhere far away. Listen, we've got more important things to think about, like how I'm going to get inside the mountain, beat this clack sky, and free your soul. Yeah, 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 you're right. And I can feel my muscles turning to stone again. We must hurry. How do I get inside the mountain? I'll pull the stairs down for you. Usually when Clax comes and goes, he softens me up for a bit, just so I can raise and lower the stairs for him, and then he changes me back to solid rock again. Once you're inside, and if you manage to defeat the madman, I don't see how you're going to do that, a young woman like yourself. I'm pretty resourceful, and I'm not your run-of-the-mill teeny bopper, either. Your what? Anyways, if you defeat Clax, you must find his study and break the crystal, the soul stone. That should break the spell and give us back our flesh and bone bodies. Sounds like a plan. All right, here goes. Watch your head, April. A labyrinth, great. I so love these things. Jump! Jump into the abyss! Who is that? Wait, don't tell me, evil wizard. They all sound like Richard III on crack. <laughs> <laughs> 